turn in your Sidereen, your prayer books, to page 192. They go right to left, the way we read Hebrew. And we're so excited. Uh, we are, it's a Shehechianu moment. We are not waiting for Noah's Ark, Parsha, and the Pet Blessing. Since we go to Lazy Dog afterwards, we, thanks to Deborah and Glenn, and their request to be here with their pooches, with their Wally, um, we are now pet friendly on Saturday. So we have some outdoor seating like we normally would have uh, at High Holy Days and we have the pet zone. And I know if it's anything like with my, my pets, they always love the Jewish music and they always love the Hebrew and they always, my, my dog Briscoe, I have my own tour at home and I was rolling it once for um, a bat mitzvah and he, on the scrolls, he literally put his paw on my hand that was on the spindle the, at the Eitzchayim and peered over to look at the Hebrew. Now, you know, this is parchment that <laughs> it has animal smell. And so he could have, you know, just, he was just following along in the Hebrew. So he gets excited at Hanukkah, but his big excitement is the shofar. And so we finally, we had this very long shofar on top of the fireplace mantle. We had to take it away. And to this day, he still cries and goes and looks for the shofar. So, it was proof to my husband that, yes, dogs do remember things and long for them. So, he has been transformed. We get transformed when we come into the sanctuary for worship, and that's what we have with our Ma Tovu prayer. So, this is a Parsha of Blessing and Curses, and the Ma Tovu prayer flipped that switch from curse to blessing. Page 192. Deep breath in, deep breath out.
read together on the top of page 193 and let us dedicate this service to all those who are suffering and who have lost loved ones in Maui. May the one whose spirit is with us in every righteous deed be with all who work for the good of humanity and bear the burdens of others and who give bread to the hungry, who clothe the naked and take the friendless into their homes. May the work of their hands endure and may the seed they sow bring abundant harvest. And we do have um, our members, the Schwarzers, who live in Hawaii. So of course I called to check on them. And if any of you happen to have Keola and Pepe's number, I want to call them, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So maybe we have it back in the archives. But we do, we have people in Virginia, we have people in Florida, we have people in Hawaii, we have people in New York, we have people in San Diego, we have people everywhere. And we're thrilled to have the people that we have here right now. So we thank God for the morning, page 194. Baruch Ata Aranai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Yatsar Et Ha Adam, Bechokwa Uvarcha, Venno Kabim, Nakabim, Chalulim, Chalulim. And we're going to go now to the next page, which we have Eloheinu Shema, where we are going to thank God for our soul, which has been given to us pure, and Heather's going to come up. And she, this is a new one that we are teaching her to add to her repertoire. And uh, page 196, Elohim Neshama, my God, the soul you have given me is pure. You created it, you shaped it, you breathed it into me, and you protect it within me. So now we are going to move forward to our Nasim Bechol Yom, our miracles of the day. And we'll just say, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, and then we will chant it in English. Last month we did all the Hebrew. And Hilda, I'm sorry for you to have to hear this because I don't think you were there. You were 
healing or on your trip or something, but someone actually came and said they thought we did too much Hebrew, which we're open to being very flexible. I, I didn't think, you know, that's a new one on me, but so we're going to do the English. So whenever we put blessing and praise out into the universe, that blessing then reflects on the divine, it reflects on all of our loved ones in the heavenly realm, and it then is like a mirror that reflects upon us. So know that whenever we say, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, blessed are you, our Adonai, our sovereign, our king, our father, uh, king of the universe, and then we'll, whatever follows after it, we're going to do in the English. So hit 198, and it continues on the next few pages. Um, so when we get to the one that you have the opportunity to say, um, you know, bot or ben, well, if it's in the Hebrew, Ben is boy and Bot is girl. But, all righty, so are we ready? Thank you, God, for the miracles of the day, most particularly Shabbat, and for all of us being here together as one family. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who has given the mind the ability to distinguish day from night. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who opens the eyes of the blind. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who frees the captive. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who lifts up the fallen. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who stretches the earth over the waters. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who strengthens our steps. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who clothes the naked. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who gives strength to the weary. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who removes sleep from the eyes and slumber from the eyelids. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who made me in the image of God. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who has made me free. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who has made me a Jew. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who girds Israel with strength. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who crowns Israel with splendor. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, blessed are you Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with meat's folk, commanding us to engage with words of Torah. Amen. So all of our services we have, because we do the first and third Friday and the second Saturday, and things shift when we have a lot of big things in the month. So, for example, in September, we have our four High Holy Day services, so the only other service we're going to have is Friday, September 8th. And that will be a catered dinner by Brit's Barbecue um, at 5 p.m. and the service at 6.30. And anyone who's new is, is our guest for that at that time. And then on the third Friday of August, we have, um, once again, we're going to have a, a pizza pasta night and salad that will be catered by Di Roma's Cucina, and that will also be food at 5, service at 6.30, and once again, our guests will be the people who are looking at joining. So, we actually have that service, the third Friday of August, the first Friday, or is it the second Friday? I'm not sure. I think it's the first Friday, September 8th, in um, September, and then it's Rosh Hashanah for us. So, um, so uh, the prayers and uh, some of the intention and definitely the sermons, the last two ones and the next two are meant to prepare us for the Yamim Noraim, the holy days that we're entering into. We discussed how in July we had the most negative three weeks of our period um, that lead up to the 9th of Av. That is a point where all the temples were destroyed and um, negative things had been done. Hitler, Hitler um, did his handiwork to try to eradicate us and Spanish Inquisition, lots of things. So it's a very dark, heavy month. We do pay attention to Mercury retrograde here because things, you know, tend to go awry, communication and computers, things like that. So Mercury actually is going to be going into retrograde around, you know, this time. It actually ends on Rosh Hashanah. So we're truly going to get like a new fresh clean slate. But seriously, 
I don't know about you, I think they're happy out there, but I think things are getting by the week more complicated and people are getting more irritated and communication is getting more confused and things are breaking, like our coffee maker broke out of nowhere and I said, Mark, what do you expect? It's mercury, you know? So has anybody experienced anything like that and has it been getting worse? So anyway, just keep an eye on that and know that if things are going crazy, just take a deep breath and say, I'm going to make it to Rosh Hashanah. And so now we're going to go forward to our hot seat Kaddish on page, uh, we're going to do uh, the hot seat that skip ahead right before we finish up. This is the dividing prayer between our official call to worship and our Kabbalah Shabbat part that are, or our morning warm up, page 224. And when I raise my hands, we rise and face the ark if we're able for the Baruch Please rise. Two shvecha tavanechemata dami hiron ve'alma bimaru. Amen. And as we do our official call to worship, I must say that now that we know how this must be set up, it is really much like High Holy Days. So it has been our preparation for how we must do this. So the ark is opened, and we have our official call to worship, the Barahu, and you can find that on page 226. So I will bow first. Everyone stands straight and tall. Then when you do the response, you bow, and I stand straight and tall. And then you stand straight and tall again, and I finish off the prayer. So everyone take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Barahu et And so now we move forward in our service to a text that everyone actually really, really loves a lot. Uh, it is very indicative of our lives and what we're going through and, and uh, it's quoted many times. So on the top of page 231, once or twice in a lifetime, a man or a woman may choose a radical leaving, having heard lech lecha go forth. God disturbs us toward our destiny by hard events and by freedom's now urgent voice, which explode and confirm who we are. We don't like leaving, but God loves becoming. Baruch ata Adonai habocher be'amo Yisrael be'ahava. We never like to get that little touch and tapas, but has ever anyone been forced or pushed to do something before they thought they were ready? And then it, it tends to work out. Or we can look back and say, oh, I don't know why that was happening then, but I understand now. 
And so that's where we come into a situation where we have to have faith in that which is unseen. And our Shema on page 232 and 233 uh, gives us that opportunity to make that connection to that voice within us. So Jeremy and Heather, I hope you don't mind, they are in the process of converting and they will be converted and get their certificates on September 8th at our first Friday service. And as is usually customary, I know there's several people in this room that have also converted and um, the Shema is just something that rings out and strikes a chord and you will hear that in the essays. They're going to have essays that they're going to read that night. Um, it's an important thing to know that this is something that we all connect to and we're meant to say it three times a day. Um, if you're traditional, when you go to bed at night, when you wake up in the morning, and then of course at times of passing. So Heather's going to come forward and lead us in the Shema. Everybody please, if you'd like to stand, stand. If you'd want to be seated, however you can make that connection. And take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Another deep breath in and a deep breath out. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Hafta prayer on page 234. If you're wearing a talit, you can grab your seat seat, which remind us that God's presence is in all four corners of the world. Um, and then we will do the insert that's in the middle. Um, oh, Wendy's not here. She loves this. We'll do this on her behalf. Um, whenever we say seat seat, we kiss it. Okay? So we're going to do the first paragraph, turn the page, and then continue on that page. They <laughs> I'll confave de ham, the Dorotam, the Natanu, I'll seat seat. Ha canna patil tehele, the Hayala ham, let seat seat, or eat ham oto, lose a heart ham, et call me toad, Hadonai, va a seat ham, o tom, the low tattoo, ah, 
And now on the top of page 239 before the Mika Mocha, Heather and Jeremy will lead you in dance just like Miriam did as she parted and went into those parted seas. And some of our musicians might do it as well. But first, let us read on the top, Emet. Okay, so let me hear you. Really nice with a lot of ruach and spirit. Top of 239. One, two, three. Emet. There is no place where you are not. Even in the wilderness, there is your word. Emet. That pen strokes of lightning, white fire, black flame, stir the soul's passion, guide our sacred way. True and enduring is Torah. Your truth for us is certain and established now and forevermore. Like Moses, Miriam, and all of Yisrael, we sing out and rejoice. Micha Mocha, page 240. Yes, I one they're all cute but the one little puppy that's his, his is that yours robin and steve or is that judy's right stacy this particular one here is like briscoe every every single prayer that little tail's going and see now it's not going yeah like connie yeah like well, so we will see the, the cockatoo, right? We'll see Connie on Noah's Ark portion. She'll be doing the Mikumoko with, or with Heather. <laughs> so now we're going to praise God. We're meant to praise God with all of our spirits. And it's very interesting that we have the pets here because I want you to realize that even though we're at the end of the Torah in the last book of uh, Deuteronomy, in my sermon, I will be referencing Genesis, the beginning of creation. And what did we get? All of us, our entire world, and our beloved animals. So... Please rise if you're able. Page 242 for the Amidah, page 244, 246, as the ark is open. Adonai, 
And let us read the middle of page 248, the English, for the sanctification of the day, and then we'll sing the door by door underneath it. Let us sanctify your name on earth as it is sanctified in the heavens above, as it is written by your prophet, up on our tippy toes, holy, 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 is Adonai Sevaot, God's presence fills the whole earth, source of strength, sovereign one, how majestic is your presence in all the earth. Blessed is the presence of God shining forth from where God dwells. God alone is our God and our creator, our ruler and our helper. And in mercy, God is revealed in the sight of all living. I am Adonai, your God. Adonai shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Hallelujah. And then I sing the Lador Vador, and then you do the response. Lador Vador, Lador Vador, Lador Vador. Lador Vador, Nagi Golecha. Lador Vador. Our Hebrew meditation class with the letters, we finished our Aleph Bet. We finished all of them this past Thursday. Next Thursday, if anyone's interested, we will have a review. And so if you haven't been to any of them and you want to get a kind of a smattering of what all of those letters mean, they all draw certain energies into us. The Aleph is the Ein Sof, the infinite oneness of God. For example, the Bet is number two, it's partnership. And when we have our hay at the end of the line, that we have the breath of life, and we breathe into ourselves the breath of consciousness and, and evolution. And of course, we love the Vav, because we always say, be the Vav, stand up straight before God and in our lives. So all of these letters have a meaning, and um, we have been meditating upon them. After High Holy Days, we will then begin uh, to put the letters together and we'll be learning what the prayers are about and reading the prayers uh, in Hebrew. So um, if you'd like to learn how to do that or you haven't done it or you need a refresher, um, please join us. And then that will then turn into the adult B'nai Mitzvah Confirmations Master Scholar. Sandra, we may have to come up with another category for you and Harry. <laughs> but uh, the doctoral <laughs> emeritus of all education. So uh, anyway, we like to learn around here, and um, that's where we're headed with that and the Hebrew. As I said, uh, we only have um, 
two services before Holy Days. On the 8th, it will be a big service. We will be um, fortunately fed with Brit's barbecue, probably a little libated as well. And then Heather and Jeremy, who are our master mixologists, will take care of us on that. And then they will give their essays and we will give um, them their certificate. And we will be going into the ocean prior to that. So if anyone would like to come spot them, because they have to go down and come up three times and they all have to be completely under the water. Then after High Holy Days, because then it will have been a full year for Jeremy, they will go to the Bait Den up uh, in, uh, off of Mulholland and then be done in a conservative fashion and go to the mikvah. So they're all going to be covered up. So top of page 250, Yismichu, I just want to let you know that we're moving into the month of Elul and that is the time where we start to go inside and uh, begin our Heshbon HaNefesh, the accounting of our soul, uh, so that we can come to Rosh Hashanah and those days of awe ready to do the work that is necessary to be written and sealed for blessing. And so September 8th, because the Saturday would be Slichot, because it's the Saturday before Rosh Hashanah, at the Friday night service, you'll remember that's when we're going to change the Torah covers to white, and we'll sing some prayers and make that connection as well. So that will be a very special night. So Yismahu on page 250. What if we do the Finkelstein Bishamru? Do you guys have that or is that in the Friday night portion? Want to do that? Since we're like in a big High Holy Day mood. So at High Holy Days we have quite the extravaganza. We have four professional soloists. We have all these wonderful musicians. We have trumpet, French horn, flute, clarinet. Uh, we have uh, saxophone and guitar. And it's uh, an experience to elevate our souls and connect to the wonder and the majesty of God. Are we ready for Vishamru? Let's read together. The people of Israel on the bottom shall keep Shabbat. Shabbat throughout the ages as a covenant for all time. It is a sign for all time between me and the people of Israel. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day God ceased from work and was refreshed.
Shabbat Shalom, everybody. So, our Parsha today, our Parsha today, Shabbat Shalom, is Re'e, which means to see. We are heading deeper into Deuteronomy, the last book of the Torah, as we said earlier. Moses is recounting everything that has happened, and the whole book is a recitation of reminder. Last week in Abkev, we talked about what it means to not only listen, but hear. This Shabbat, we take that a little farther by seeing, which can then lead to knowing. It is written, God saw and it was good. Seven times in Genesis, God observes his creation to be good. In Genesis 4, 1, 4, after he had spoken light into existence, he declared it to be good. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 10, after separating the water from the land, he called that good. After creating plant life in Genesis chapter 1, verse 12, he saw that it was good also. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 18, after putting in place a system for lighting the earth and for separating night from day, he calls that good. That's what we celebrate at Havdalah. And then we have a very exciting one for today. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 21, he created the animals. And after he did that, he went forth and the animals helped populate the water and the air. And then he observes all of these wonderful creatures and says, that is good too. So finally, after creating humanity as the capstone of his creation, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 30, he takes a look, or she, at everything that he or she has created and looks around and says, you know what? This is not just good. This is very good. He observed, he acknowledged, he saw, and this one world, this one, out of all the other worlds, because he says, this one is very good. Not just good, very good. We are reminded by Moses in our Parsha that blessings and curses will follow us based upon our choices. Something to start thinking about as we move into High Holy Days. We can have it be good. We have the power to create or destroy. It's all up to us. Some feel that seeing is believing, and yes, at times, that may be true. Yet we are also meant to have faith in this omnipotent, all-powerful God that we really can't see, and we are meant to know and have a relationship with. True faith is most prevalent and powerful when against all odds, no matter what is happening in our lives, we can hold on. So think of everyone in the fires in Malibu. I was in that, now we have the fires in Maui. You have to hold on and you have to have faith. You don't know if you have a home or not, but you have to have faith that you're gonna get through this. And if you've lost loved ones or animals, it's devastating, but somehow you have to have faith and get through the difficulties knowing that we have something that is guiding us, something that will not let us fall. And that while we're in the process of these difficulties and these traumas and these disasters, that we don't lose our faith in that which is not seen. And even if you're not sure about your relationship with God, we have divinity inside of ourselves and we need to have faith in ourselves that we can get through the darkness to the light. At funerals, I frequently mention the reality of a baby. A mom is pregnant, she's carrying that baby. We don't actually see the baby, but the baby is there in a parallel existence to us. And just as our loved ones, when they pass and move on, they are there in a parallel existence to us. Sometimes we have people who will get evidence of the presence of those who have moved on. Messages and signs, maybe some sights, some smells, some sounds. Anybody ever experience any of that? There is so much that we don't see that is really there. What about a loved one who has been there for us all along and we didn't see it until we were ready? Or whether in times of need or maybe even in a relationship, 
There's someone who's standing patiently by that's there for us 100%, whether it's a partner or a really good friend or a family member waiting for us to open up and to finally see. Everyone needs to be seen. Everyone needs to be listened to, to be heard, to be seen, and to be known. And God is like that. Waiting patiently by, waiting for us to see. To not only listen and to hear like last Shabbat, but to now see even when feeling him or her not. At the time of the Exodus, we were meant to see the 10 plagues, to witness the glory and wonder of God, the one true God at a time of many gods. However, sometimes our need to see gets in the way of our actual vision. Sometimes we turn away and don't want to see a stranger that is in need, the homeless person on the street, maybe someone we ran into at the market on our way, and maybe we just don't want to engage with them, maybe we don't have our makeup on, maybe we're just not in the mood, maybe we just don't like them, and we kind of go to another aisle or something like that. But times happen when we want to see and be seen, and then times when we maybe just you know, want to have some privacy and, and not see. So it's important to recognize when we want to hide, when we choose to not be seen. And then also when we choose to put ourselves out there and truly be seen. It's always difficult for people to believe that when I was young, I was incredibly shy, horribly shy. I went to two schools for almost every grade until I got to high school. So to overcome that, I knew that I had to get with the program really fast because I probably only had six months to get to know people. And I, I like to be around people, but I am shy. And then later on, I went into theater and that of course helped and it's quite, quite common for actors to actually be shy. The very act of overcoming that which is held within the character and make being one with that character, you get to hide, right Dan? You get to dissolve and hide behind that character. Dan's done theater. Rather than being seen through the lens of our own selves, we get to be somehow seen through the lens of someone else. But then nevertheless, we are seen but we can choose to see or not see. So I probably never should have listened, but when you look back on a life, I wouldn't be standing here today, maybe had I listened, but I was at a very famous acting school, but I was singing at the same time and I was acting. And the director said, you have to make a choice between being a singer or an actress. You can't put all your energy into both. Choose one, be really excellent at one, and then if you wanna do something else, fine. But then much later, Streisand became a big thing. You know, we have all these actors now who sing, and sometimes they don't even sing and they learn how to sing so they can do the part. But everything happens in our lives for a reason. So much like in Hamlet, we can choose to be or not to be. We can choose to see or not see. We can choose to be seen or we can choose to hide and not be seen. That is really the ultimate question. Are we going to see another's despair, pain, hurt, or are we going to turn away? Are we going to see another's misfortune, or are we going to turn a blind eye? Or on another note, are we going to see another's unabashed love and support when we are not so inclined to reciprocate, or maybe not even feeling worthy of their love at that time, not being able to open ourselves up to that love? So as the new year is approaching, we need to ask ourselves these questions. How fully do we want to be? Seeing is risky because with it comes choice and the free will that we have been given. Are we going to see what needs to be fixed or are we going to run away? Are we going to see the gifts that we have been given personally or collectively and actually embrace them, acknowledge them, nurture them, and then fully share them? It's interesting when talking about blessing and curse that our Parsha also speaks about tithing, giving charity, and then also about releasing people from their debt after a period of time. Not looking away and seeing where help is needed, financially or otherwise, offering support, and then sometimes being willing to release and let go. 
If one has been blessed with the resources to help, it cannot be avoided. You cannot turn a blind eye and choose not to see. We are all commanded to see, to act, to share what we are able to support, to not hold back or run away or hide, and then to release and set free. We all have the power to choose who we want to be, how we will treat one another. And then these choices can at times affect the reality that we live in at any given moment. But times change, and so too can we. We are always evolving. Rashi, our greatest medieval commentator, tells us regarding this Parsha that God's blessings are unconditional. They are given to us before we earn them. Think about that. The blessings are there before we earn them. We have the choice to prepare ourselves and put ourselves in the flow of that abundance. However, in contrast, God's curses are conditional. They only apply after we have sinned. God has rigged the system in our favor. And this is Rashi saying that. There is a favorable divine bias toward us. God is not neutral or dispassionate, but is deeply involved with us and over and over again calls us to make the right choices for our own benefit and the world as well. We are rapidly approaching High Holy Days. Let us choose to see that which is unseen in ourselves, in others, in our world, and where we can make a difference. Let us choose who we engage with, who we stay away from. Let us make sure that we abide with good companions, positive influences. Let us choose to search for all the hidden parts of ourself that need redemption, renewal, rebirth, and truly see, so that we can fix that which is hidden and be not only written but sealed for a better new year. Let us choose to see God so that when it's most dark, we will have something to hang on to. That is where the real faith comes in and the lifeline that we need to get through the hardest of times. So if we choose to see, if we choose to know, if we choose to support, if we choose to help, all will be good. Not just good, very good. And just like God, we create our reality. Curses will fade away and blessings will follow in abundance. This Shabbat and always, may it be so. Can he write so? May it be God's will. Shabbat Shalom. Do you feel like you're getting prepared? Mm -hmm. Okay. I know what's coming because I have the sermons written pretty much. So it's going to be a good year. Now. We are going to read some Torah, and uh, Steve Marcuse is going to come forward. Well, actually, I'll tell you what. Before you come up, let me read some English so that you don't have to stand here a really long time, and Crystal, and then we'll move to the Torah portion. Um, while I'm going to read to you some of the text, um, Jeremy and Heather, would you like to pass out the Hebrew? We have some Hebrew for those of you. Now, remember, you don't know how to have to read this, right, guys? Just look at it. Your soul knows what it says, and you will make a connection. Those of you that are learning your Hebrew, it's an opportunity, once again, to practice. So, I'm going to share some of the Parsha so that you can see, I don't make this stuff up, that it is really there. And I think after High Holy Days, if many of you want to go back to Torah study and start the year anew, maybe at Genesis and move on and can maybe get Mark to do Torah study again. So I'm going to read to you first, at the very beginning of our Parsha, See, I present before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing that you hearken to the commandments of Hashem your God that I command you today. And the curse, if you do not hearken to the commandments of Hashem your God and you stray from the path that I command you today to follow the gods of others that you did not know, that is when you shall find curse and not blessing. And then we move on. The entire word that I command you, that shall you observe to do, you shall not add to it, you shall not subtract from it. 
If there should stand up in your midst a prophet or a dreamer of a dream, and he will produce to you a sign or wonder, and that sign or wonder actually comes about, comes to pass, of which he spoke to you, saying, let us follow gods of others that you do not know, and we shall worship them. Do not hearken to the words of that prophet or to that dreamer of dreams, for Hashem, your God, is testing you to know whether you love Hashem your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Hashem your God shall follow and he or she will be there with you. The commandments that you shall observe and God's voice shall hearken to you and you shall serve and unto him you shall cleave. And that prophet and that dreamer of a dream shall be put to death for he had spoken perversion against Hashem your God who takes you out of the land of Egypt, who redeems you from the house of slavery, to make you stray from the path on which Hashem, your God, has commanded you to go. And then you shall destroy the evil from your midst. If your brother, the son of your mother, and your son or your daughter, or the wife of your bosom, or your friend who is like your own soul, will entice you secretly, saying, let us go and worship the gods of others that you did not know, you or your forefathers, from the gods of the peoples that are all around you, no matter where you may dwell, those near to you or those far from you, from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth, you shall not accede to him and not hearken to him. Your eye shall not take pity on him. You shall not be compassionate nor conceal him. This is the word of the Lord your God. So that oneness that we speak about in the Shema when we are meant to connect and to honor other idols and just know that there is the one true God, this is what we're being reminded of uh, as we are closing the book and hopefully going forward into the promised land. And then this is the text uh, that we will be chanting today and you have the Hebrew. At the end of seven years, you shall institute a remission. This is the matter of the remission. Every creditor shall remit his authority over what he has lent his fellow. He shall not press his fellow or his brother, for he has proclaimed a remission for Hashem. You may press the Gentile, but over what you have with your brother, you shall remit your authority. However, may there be no destitute among you. Rather, Hashem will surely bless you in the land that Hashem your God will give you as an inheritance to possess it only if you will hearken to the voice of Hashem your God, to observe, to perform this entire commandment that I command you today. For Hashem your God has blessed you as he has told you. And remember, this is Moses saying this to the people. You will lend to many nations. You will not borrow. You will not dominate. But they will not dominate you. If there shall be a destitute person among you, any of your brethren in any of your cities, in your land that Hashem your God gives you, you shall not harden your heart or close your hand against your destitute brother. Rather, you shall open your hand to him, you shall lend him his requirement, whatever is lacking to him. You shall support him or her. Beware lest there be a lawless thought in your heart saying, the seventh year approaches the remission year, and you will look malevolently upon your destitute brother or sister and refuse to give him. Then he may appeal against you to Hashem, and this will now be a sin upon you. You shall surely give him and let your heart not feel bad when you give him, for in return for this matter, Hashem, your God, will bless you in all your deeds and in every undertaking. When you give, you shall receive. When you hold back, this is the whole parsha of blessings and curses. For destitute people will not cease to exist within the land. Therefore, I command you, saying, you surely must open your hand to your brother, your sister, to your poor, and to your destitute in your land. And that is what we're going to chant today. So, words to... Think upon. It's always a, a, a struggle to when you see a homeless person on the street. I have many a time given, 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 and sometimes they throw the money back at me and say it's not enough. And then sometimes you wonder, okay, well, we give to charity and that charity should support them. Um, but it isn't for us to judge, only God judges. And that's at High Holy Days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur when we beg and pray for mercy.
So if you'll turn your prayer books to the Torah service, and Steve Marcuse and Crystal are going to come up, and you can find uh, the Torah service, or the blessing. We'll just do a brief Aliyah before and after, which you can find on 368. And uh, please uh, rise as the ark is open if you're able. In Kamoka, Elohima, Dahunai, Ben Kema, Secha, Malkutaha, Malkut, Pololami, Umem Shaltaha, Behold, door of a door. I don't know, I melech, I don't know, I malach, I don't know, I need love, they love, I'm burning. I don't know, I always lay a moe to hang. I don't know, I never read it. I don't know, I never read it. And so now we're going to take the Torah out and I. No, I'm going to hand it to you. There you go. You ready? Which shoulder do you like? Okay. Got it? Armin, did you got it? Like a baby? Like those wonderful grandchild. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to do the Shema first, and uh, Steve and I will do it first, and then you can repeat, and then the Echad, and then we'll turn and, well, we'll fit, turn and face the Ark for the God Lou. Are you ready? Shema Yisrael Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad. Everyone. Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Echad. Echad Eloheinu. Gadol Adonai Kadosh Shemo. Everyone. Echad Eloheinu. Gadol Adonai Kadoshimo, and we're going to turn and face the ark. God lu ladonai iti, una roma mashimo yachta. And so now Steve's going to go walk around, and you guys can touch your tali too. You can you can come this way, Steve. It might be a little easier. Oh, guess not. Okay, want to follow him? Okay, so you can uh, touch the Torah with your prayer book, with your talis. And we're going to get ready for our Torah portion. And if you'd like to sing, the Adonai, it's on the bottom of page 366. The In the middle of the next page, 367. i <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right. So now we are going to uh, do our Misha Barak prayer and then our closing prayers, and then we'll go eat lunch. We'll have Kiddush Motsi over here. So if you'll turn to page 371. And at this time, our thoughts go to those who are in need of a refua shlema, a prayer of healing for physical or spiritual or psychic renewal and strength. Our thoughts go out to our immediate past president, Diana Wolf. 
um, who is recovering at home. She is wanting visitors on her deck, maybe one or two at a time, not a whole crew all at one time. But I, Diana likes to be around people and she likes to be active, so we need to bring the party to her. And then also we have many of our community. Uh, Terry Schneier is dealing with her breast cancer. She's all excited she went and got things to make herself look wonderful and shared that with many of us and uh, she's going through her journey and we'll find out at the end of the month if she needs chemotherapy or hormone therapy so our prayers we want to be with her on that we're grateful to god that mark and sandra have recovered from their covid and they're back with us and may you have no residual effect or no relapse so we're praying for that and there's so many people that we know and that we love that are in the process of healing or staying alive sometimes it's a full-time job just staying alive does anybody ever feel that way so those in this room and those in our community and those around the world those that are suffering with pain we wish them a refu shalom complete and full healing so, so close your eyes if you'd like say the names of your people that you want to send a prayer and a blessing to or see them in your mind's eye as we sing the mishabero as the ark is open for the Amidah, uh, the Aleinu, our closing prayer. Turn to 586 for the Aleinu, bottom of the page, top of the next page, and then over two pages. Aleinu l'shaveach l'adon hako, l'tegir l'alertzer b'reshi, shalo asanu k'lye ha'ratzon, v'lo asanu k'mishpachot ha'adama, shalo sa'chel k'nu k'ahem, Begoraleinu kako hamonam banachnu korim umishtachavim umodim lefnemelech malche halachim hakadosh baruchu shehuna teshemayim beyosin aretz umoshavim harum bashemayim imahal mishchina duzal mishchina duzal begov hey meromi hu eloheinu ein od. Emet Malkinu Efesulato, Kakatu Vitorato, Vedata Hayom, Vedata Hayom, Vahashemota, El Lavavaha, Ki Adonai, who I Elohim, Basha Mayim, Mimal, Vayal Hares, Vayal Hares, Vitaha, Nain, Ode, Ode, 
Ve'ne'emar Ve'haya Adonai Le'melech al kol ha'aretz Ve'yom ha'hu Ve'yom ha'hu Ye'yeh Adonai Echad U'shemo 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 Echad Please be seated. And now we're going to, thoughts are going to turn, if you'll turn to 598, to those who have moved on into the spiritual realm. And once again, if you look at the English, there's no message uh, anywhere or uh, any text that says anything about mourning. It's all a glorification and exaltation of the divine. And like I said at the beginning of our service, when we do that, uh, then the blessing reflects up on high and then back upon us all. When we say Kaddish for our loved ones, this is an extra added boost of energy for them and for the world, and once again, for the divine. I'll raise my hand when I say Bidi Maru, and you can say Amen, uh, or if you're not saying the whole text, or you can follow along in the transliteration, or the text will go slowly. If you have lost someone in the last seven days, would you please rise and say their name in the last seven days? Oh, Sunny. Sorry, no. And then if you've lost someone in the last 30 days, the Shloshim period, Sunday. If anyone has lost someone in the last 11 months, please rise and say your loved one's name, Sunny. May the light of the sunshine of your being and God's be upon them all. So our prayers are with you and our love as together we all rise and say the Kaddish. Does anyone have a yard site? Raise your hand, the anniversary. Sunny. I think you should go play the lotto. I think all those people are going to be shined down upon you. And then, and with our Torah portion, I know you're someone who will share. So may it be so. Anyone else have a yard site? Okay, together we'll read the Kaddish on page 598. Yikadal, the Yikada Shemeraba, the Alma de Ra Kirote, the Amlif Makute, the Hayehon, the Yomehon, the Haye, the Hobe Israel, Ba Agala, the Isman Kari, the Miro, Yehe Shame Raba, Mevara, the Alam Ulame Amaya, Yit Bra, the Ishtaba, the Par, the Roman, the Nase, the Itadar, the Itala, the Itala, Shame Kudisha, Rehu. Leela min kol birchata v'shirata, tush birchata v'nechamata, zamiran ve'alama v'imru. Yehe shalama raba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru. O se shalom v'imru ma, hu yase shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. May God, who is the source of all that is seen and unseen, Grant eternal rest and peace to our loved ones in the heavenly realm, and peace to those who are mourning and fresh with grief at this time, peace to those who have lost loved ones in Hawaii and Maui and around the world, as together we say, Amen. Please be seated as we have some announcements from our president. Got a lot to say here, and I'm going to need everyone's help. Going to need everyone's help. A lot to say, a lot to say. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Welcome to everyone here in our building and those at home watching on live stream. And of course, thank you, Mr. Mark Tannen, for providing that. Our service is sponsored tonight by Bob and Natalie Spencer in loving memory of Natalie's sister, Marilyn Ferguson. I see we have some beautiful flowers. Anybody know who sponsored the flowers? Because I, I don't. Thank you. Um, thank you, whoever sponsored the flowers. Okay. Um, Rabbi Cantor Didi, thank you very much for your sermon. You can run, but you certainly cannot hide. And I am proof because I'm standing up here in front of you right now. Okay. You did. 
Thank you to our talented musicians, Dan, our music director, Hilda, it is so wonderful to have you back, our Stacy, um, me, and Heather, our wonderful cantorial solist, sounded. Thank you. I, you are amazing. It's been a pleasure to meet you, and I'm glad you're here with us as we get to know each other in our congregation. So then, Dan's Zoom class will be August 30th at 7.30, okay? I believe Roger's Zoom meditation continues. Now, does anybody know anything about that? Does anybody do it? You do it? Okay, because it's a mystery, the link. I never have a link, but if anybody wants to, uh, maybe could hey, say uh, Harriet. Harriet, or... no one can hear you when people talk out there. At some point, okay. we'll probably have to have Jeremy run around with the microphone if people are going to start talking. But um, his, it's an Eastern meditation class, Eastern. and it's on Mondays, and it's at 7. 7, And yes. it's for about an hour, okay. and it's every Monday, and Roger is a magnificent human being and soul, and it's done online, and we encourage you all. So you can get Eastern Meditation with Roger on Monday, and you can get Hebrew Meditation with me on Thursday. Yes. But it's all good. And then we have Mark Tannen's Jewish Legend Zoom classes, the third Tuesday at 7, Rabbi Didi's Hebrew class on select Thursdays. Watch for email announcements. Now, a lot of fun stuff coming up. August 15th, 4 o'clock, we're going to see the Oppenheimer movie which is supposed to be very, very good. It's a three-hour movie, and that is the AMC Rolling Hills 20 by the Stonefire Grill, which there'll be dinner after at 7.30. Now, Marshall has something planned for August 20th. Are you yes. Right? It's a play at the it, Little Fish Theater in Yeah, San we're going to have brunch in the play at the Little Fish Theater, and, and I think we're going to have brunch at 12, and the play's at 2 in yeah, San Pedro. it's called Vanya, Sonia, and Masha, and it sounds like three sibling sisters, and. Uh, another sibling that comes in and the mix they get into in middle age and if you have siblings and you have to deal with them in middle age It sounds pretty intriguing to me and the Friday before that is our third Friday service Yes, and then the third Friday service uh, there will be dinner from uh, uh, Roma Cucina, Roma Cucina at five um, But with August 20th for Little Fish Theater um, Please let Marcia know your interest because she has to make reservations. So if anybody's interested in that contact Marsha and or or rabbi and yes. they'll guide you to the right place. Yes, yes Crystal. Crystal It's in San Pedro. I believe it's on Center Street in San Pedro It's right behind where the Irish restaurant was the whale, whale and the ale. The ale. That's no but longer. I don't, oh, that's a shame mm -hmm. that was good. Okay, so August 22nd happy hour at Rockefeller's three o'clock. Yes, happy hour at Rockefeller's two dollar hamburgers That's why we go and then Marshall is also planning she uh, that there September 30th uh, a possibility of a singer, Sophia Talvik, and I believe that's at the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Annex Theater in San Pedro. So watch your emails, because there's a lot of things coming up. And there's also going to be two more movies, if we can manage it, in amongst High Holy Days that are coming out, Golda. Oh, that's yeah. a must-see. And then the one that's my big fat Greek wedding oh, revisited. Yeah. <laughs> so we know what you guys like to see, so. Okay, all right. Um, so that would be good. That would be very good. And um, I think that's it for Marsha. Now, um, Pat Alexander, donation boxes in the back for clothing and food. Pat, do you want to share your experience? No, no one will hear you. The, oh, okay. But apparently she had a very good experience when she dropped off the food and the clothing uh, for the, the food bank. So. Please keep it up. And Jeremy, thank you so much for providing that box for everybody. So everyone, please give donations for the Little Villages. We have, uh, they brought towels again. So Pat, there'll be towels, uh, food items, whatever you've got. And clothing will start to be gathered. And I'll, you say it and I'll tell them. We're going to be doing the clothing, warm clothes, through the first Friday in September. Okay, warm clothing, you can bring them through the first Friday of September. Yes, definitely. We should have a push for the food on Yom Kippur and then through Sukkot, maybe. So anyway, so yes, thank you, Pat, for all you do. And they love it. I mean, they were really excited to see me yesterday. 
Very good, thank you. So our next service Friday, August 18th, emails have gone out to you. You should let Judy Fratkin know if you want to have dinner from Doromas. Uh, you can pay by check or online. And keep your uh, ears peeled for the next lunch bunch, probably in September. I believe yes. you had a nice lunch bunch this yes, week, we last do. week. Yes. Okay, and so we will see you at the Lazy Dog after the service. Yes. And Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Come I have know a I forgot with something, rabbi. but we'll pick it up next time. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent job. Thank you, Madam President. Also, it's important to note our High Holy Day tickets will be um, starting to be mailed after August 15th. So, if you have paid your dues, you will, if you've paid your dues, you will get your High Holy Day tickets. Um, if you've made arrangements to pay your dues, whether you need them monthly or if you need a financial arrangement or whatever, if you need a financial arrangement, you can let me know, you can let Marianne know, um, and then we'll let our treasurer know and everybody, but those things are private and confidential, and nobody should uh, ever be uh, not, let, you know, welcome. We love you all. And we even have guardians who help uh, pay for scholarships as well. So let us bless one another and then let us sing Ose Shalom. And then let us do Kiddush and Motzi. And then, Mark, if you're hearing me, please let Lazy Dog know that we'll probably be 15 minutes late, maybe 12.45. We're still Jewish standard time. Oh, no, whatever you want to do. Okay, everyone, let's bless one another with the beer cup, Kohanim. Next Friday, we will do birthdays and anniversaries. Next Friday. Okay, we just, they just had wonderful anniversary. Are we ready? So, in the priestly benediction that crosses over through many different denominations of faith, may God bless you and keep you. May God's countenance shine upon you. May God be with you always and grant you peace. May God help us to be able to not only listen, but hear, and to be able to see, to search to see that which is seeable and that which is unseen within ourselves, in others, and throughout our world, so that this next year we can be not only written, but sealed for an abundant, healthy, good year. And the prayers that we do help the world as well. In between, you say, Kemi hi ratzon, or may it be God's will. May it be God's will. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you to our musicians. Thank you to these two up here for everything. Thank you for <laughs> Glenn and Deborah for encouraging us to have pets on the patio and for everybody that helped set that up. Thank you to our guys in the sound room. Thank you to Judy for making sure that we have our Kiddush and Motzi. And everyone, please go this way as we sing Oh, say Shalom. Oh, say.
And um, I guess we could bring it to you guys since you can't bring the pets in. You can't bring them in. So, you know what? If you want, you can bring them around and we'll open that door or we can bring the kid to do. You wanna come over here? Okay, tell, tell everybody out there. Those of you with pets can walk around to the other doors. Steve, will you open up the other doors so that they can be a part of it? Pets are not allowed in the building because of allergy concerns. If you have a Hebrew sheet that you're not taking, please return it to us.